Welcome to week three of a continuing series. And once again, we're blessed to have as our special guest, Dr. Corey Gold. And, you know, if you've been with us over the last couple of weeks, you've gotten a pretty good foundation of um, the very simple basic training, that which we equip ourselves with. And we talked today in our leadership call online about uh, the simple skills that we need to acquire and we need to be able to pass on to our team members so that they gain uh, the confidence to, to, to do those simple things over and over again, over and over again that, uh, that invite and uh, enroll people, uh, inviting them to, to longevity. And that, in fact, was the topic of last week. Dr. Corey covered um, some really fantastic information. If you haven't availed yourself of that yet, let us know. We'll get you the replay link. But tonight, Dr. Corey is going to share with us the how and the why of doing meetings and events. So, uh, Dr. Corey Gold, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you for joining (laughs) us tonight. The virtual floor. Thank you. You Uh, got it. I'm glad to be here, and this is one of my favorite topics. And I'm an old-school network marketer in many, many, many ways because a lot of the things that I was taught in networking 24 years ago work fantastic today. And a lot of times you'll hear me when I'm talking to some of the leaders, I'm like, I'm driving to a meeting. I'm on the freeway out to a meeting. Why do I do so many meetings? Because meetings really work. In fact, one of the things that I've always judged by the health of my organization is how many meetings are happening every day in my organization. Meetings. I love conference calls, and I like webcasts, and I love one-on-ones, and all those things are great, two-on-ones, but there's nothing more vital to network marketing than first the small meetings, then the little larger meetings, then the regional meetings, then the national meetings, and how it filters all in together. And the meeting that I was at last night, which had 48 people, we only had five people at less than two months ago, and it's now at 48. So we talked last week about the job of the brand new person is not to do the whole presentation. The job of the brand new person is to be an inviter to see a presentation. And that presentation could be a live presentation or it could be, you know, a virtual thing or it could be a a three-way call or it could be watching a video of some sort, maybe a video link sent. But of all those options, the best one of them is actually a live personal meeting. Even if it's just people in your own home, even if it's just three or four people in your own home. Because last week we talked about every single prospect that's going to be coming to you, and you are the same way, has three questions in mind when they sit and listen to a presentation. First thing is, is this real? Is what I'm looking at real? Is the company real? Are the products real? Is the compensation real? Is the industry real? Is this, you know, is this person who's asking me to join real? Is this a real deal? And we're going to talk about how we answer that through the meeting we hold. The second question they're going to be asking is, could I do this? So they're watching to see how you are enrolling them because they're saying, as I am being recruited, I will probably recruit other people very similarly. And the third thing they're asking is, are you there to help me and show me how to do it? So, yeah, I found that I love those products and the business seems really great. I bet you I could learn how to do this. Is there a system for me to learn this? Not just from the company, but from my upline support team as well. So I love meetings. I don't care if they're meetings in people's houses where we're sitting on couches and somebody standing in front of a television talking about the business. Molina Briggs, Senior Vice Chairman out of Hawaii, Team Aloha, a lot of you know her. Her very first meeting that I got her to do, we did over a speakerphone for her. And she just put a speakerphone in the middle of her room and we did a speakerphone meeting for her. And now she's Team Aloha. She's a Senior Vice Chairman. She's making, you know, a six-figure, nice six-figure income. She just moved to her new house. And all those things are happening But the first thing we asked her to do was start holding meetings and create relationships with people. I know uh, Jenny might be on the line here today, and one of the very first conversations, Vice Chairman Jenny Smith, one of the very first things I asked her to do was start holding more meetings. And we can see that she's moving through the levels very well. If you ask Mike Battistelli or Kate, they'll tell you about meetings. Ask Deb Brooks and talk about meetings 
That's where it will talk about meetings because that's the lifeblood of network marketing. And they don't have to be complicated. But there's a different kind of relationship created when you meet people face-to-face. When the Beyond Organic people first start, thought of coming to Longevity, I remember talking to Devin Mark, and they were like, I don't know about these people. I remember talking to Mike, Mike Fattacelli, he was like, I don't know about these people. And then when we all got together face-to-face in a room in California, within three days, we were like, oh, we love each other. Let's be friends for life. And that would never have happened, or it would have taken a lot longer to happen if we hadn't broken bread together, we hadn't spent time together, we hadn't, you know, actually been face-to-face and got to experience each other and get to know each other. And that's one of the things that happens in a meeting. Now, a meeting has really four aspects to it. There's the meeting before the meeting, which is when people come and they're aggregating and they're getting ready to see the presentation. There's the meeting itself. There's the little time after the meeting where, you know, you're answering questions and you're getting people enrolled or getting people products. And then there's the follow-up of the meeting. Meetings should not be complex. When I look at meetings on the Internet, and I've seen a few of them recently where I see people in fancy schmancy places on the beach with shrimp cocktails and champagne, I'm going, that's a great meeting. I'd love to come to it, but I don't want my team to do those meetings. That's the kind of thing I want to do for recognition. Hey, we've got these great people. They just got rank advanced. Let's go to the beach and have shrimp cocktails and, you know, let's have a great time on the beach because we're recognizing you. But the meetings we're putting on, the average person coming to it, at least the local meetings, have to be the kind that they go, I could put that kind of meeting on. Now, I was always taught in network marketing to build for the impending next event whether it be start with a local meeting and then maybe be a regional training, then it'd be like a national or a regional event and then a national event and so forth. And when we go to like Charlotte and we're at a corporate sponsored national event, yeah, I expect that to be kind of fun and glitzy. When we were in Ontario, we had the whole convention center. I expect that to be fun and glitzy and not something a distributor could put on on their own because it's not intended to be copied by the distributor. But when we put on meetings, whether or not in our home or a rec center, or our office, or eventually in the hallway, you know, in the embassy suite, you know, the back room of the embassy suite, it is designed to be something a person goes, I can invite people to my home. I could eventually grow a group and have a, a meeting at the, the rec center of my, at my uh, condo complex. I could eventually use my church for a meeting. I could eventually get the courtyard by Marriott back room that seats 40, 50 people. They want to see if they could duplicate what you're doing. They're judging us and saying, how hard is this to do? First thing about meetings is, I believe they should start on time. The meetings that I held in San Diego have started within two minutes of the start time every single time. And I've told people they would not last more than one hour from start to finish, and we've never finished more than two or three minutes late, period. I'm actually the last, I'm I'm the person who closes. I'm actually watching the clock. I'm mindful of the time because I tell the people, we understand you're really busy and this is going to be a thumbnail sketch about our business. We're an 18-year-old business. We have thousands of products. We have an interesting compensation plan. Obviously, in an hour, we can't tell you everything, but we want to give you an overview of what we're doing. It'll take an hour And if you have to go, you can go afterwards. If you want to stay afterwards and talk and ask some questions and get acquainted, we're happy to have you do that. Why do I tell them it's going to take an hour? Because most people, if they know the start and they know the end, will give you attention for that period of time. It's when they think the meetings that go on forever and ever and they don't know it's going to have an end that they leave in the middle because they don't know when the end is going to come. So when they know, okay, to start at 7, it could be done by 8. But also think about this. They're already thinking in their head, well, if I join this and I invite my friends to come, is it going to start on time? Is it going to end on time? Is it going to go on forever? And the reason these things are important is because when you're thinking, okay, I'm going to join this group of people. I love this product. I love this company. But would I bring my friends here? I mean, it starts like 45 minutes late. It starts an hour late. My friends are going to be 
kissed at me. It starts an hour late. It could, the meeting went for two and a half hours. What the heck was that? I can't bring my friends to a two and a half hour meeting. I can bring them to a training once they join. That's different. They're in. They're being trained. We tell them it's going to be like we're going to have a super Saturday for my new group out here in Southern California. It's going to go from 9 o'clock to probably end sometime around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to have coffee and juice breaks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody's already in. Everybody wants to be trained. It's not like I'm – they're coming for that understanding. But when we're doing a prospect meeting, I don't want it to be more than an hour. An hour is at the most tops of what it should be. 45 minutes is even better if you can get it done in that period of time. But an hour at the outset is okay. And you need to start on time. Now, if there's a torrential flood or something crazy happens, yes, there's always exceptions to the rule. But I'm talking about 99% of the time. And if people come in late, we don't start over. We just keep going. We welcome them. We're not mad at them. We invite them. We're happy they're here. We keep going. We have at all our meetings, regardless if it's a home meeting or it's a meeting at somebody's place with a 15, 20, 30, 50, 100 people coming, we have a sign-in sheet. We ask their name. We ask who invited them. We ask what their phone number is. And uh, we ask what their email is. If they don't give us the information other than their name, okay. Whatever they give us, they give us. We ask who invited them. But the reality is, is that even if it's a small meeting, unless it's you by yourself and you invited your four girlfriends, then you don't need that. But if it's a meeting where two or three people are going to be there together, one person in that meeting room, it's a sign to check people in. Later on, when you get a little more sophisticated in your meetings or larger, you have name tags, blue might mean that this person's already a distributor, red might mean they're a guest, and the person's name tag's on it. We can go over those kind of things later. But it's always nice when people know you by name, and it's always nice when people can greet you. Hey, you know, hey, Mike, hey, Corey, how's it going? You know my name. I love convention because everyone wears a freaking name tag. <laughs> I, I mean, there's like, there's like there's like thousands of people at Young Devity, and they're like, Hey, remember me? Like, well, I don't want to say no. I mean, I do remember them, but I mean, there's a lot of names. Yeah, you're Phil Smith from Mississippi. Sure, how are you, Phil? I don't really remember Phil Smith's name. I do remember Phil Smith, but the names escape me. I, people like their names being said, so I love name tags. Name tags are out of place at a meeting with 10 people at it. You know, when you get past 10, name tags are fine. You know, when they're smaller than that, just your friends, you don't need it. So I believe in having someone greet the people. I believe in people checking in. I believe in the meeting starting on time. Now, when you get a meeting that's, let's say, out of your house or the meeting's bigger than 10, 15, 20 people, I even like nice jazzy music playing. I like high uptone music that, that's fun and exciting and energetic, but I don't like meeting, music meeting that's so loud you can't talk. It's just with the underlying things so that people get it, you know, feel good about it, that people have a positive vibe. Now, one of the things I want to talk about before we even start the meeting is that when you meet somebody at a meeting, we'll go about meeting etiquette, before we even talk about the meeting, you're, you're saying, hey, hey, hi, it's nice to meet you. Obviously, there are guests you don't know that person. You just thought, you know, who invited you today? You know, Mary says, oh, Mary Smith. Mary Smith is one of my favorite people. I love Mary Smith. We, one of the things we want to do is make sure that we're edifying the person who invited them. That person may or may not be in the room, okay? Because one of the things that we're trying to do is make that person feel like they're joining the right person, the right team. So if all of a sudden somebody said to me, well, you know, I go, hey, you know, it's nice to meet you. You know, where are you from? I'm from, you know, you know Orange. You're fantastic. I've been there a lot of time. Who invited you? Uh, Kate, that is, oh, Kate, Kate's fantastic. I love Kate. My, have you ever tried her cooking? She is just the greatest cook in the world. Oh, my God, she's just doing so great work here at Longevity. She, we just love her. Brag on the person who invited them because it helps that person say, wow, people know Kate. People like Kate. People, she must be doing really well. We're setting the tone to have a person want to say yes. In other words, the meeting starts on time. The people are happy. It's professional but not overbearing. Everyone seems to know and like each other. When every time somebody meets a guest, they're like, oh, my God, how nice it is to meet you. Okay? Now, when the meeting begins, I don't want all the network marketers 
standing in the hallway and letting the distributors hear the story by themselves. I've been to meetings where I go into a meeting and I'm up on stage talking and I look, why are all the distributors out in the hall? They're all chit-chatting and they'll go, well, Corey, we already know all the stuff, so we're just like catching up. Every single person in that meeting has a role to play. You may not even know this. Even in a meeting where there's just three distributors and three guests and you're all in somebody's living room, you have an enormous role to play. In fact, I will tell you that I believe the audience has an equally important role to play to the presenter. If I am on stage presenting and everyone looks bored and everyone's playing on their phone and no one's laughing at my jokes, people are going to think, oh, God, the people in this thing don't even think it's very important. They're not even paying attention. You know, I thought it was pretty good, but obviously I'm wrong because the people who are in it couldn't care less. And you're saying, oh, no, Corey, I love you, Jeffy. I'm just busy texting. I'm just busy typing. I'm just busy liking things. You need to be busy paying attention to what the person in front of the room is doing and laughing and nodding your head and uh uh-huh and, uh, you know, you need to be verbally involved with the conversation because the person sitting in the room is asking that question, is this real? And, of course, the person in the front of the room, whether they're charismatic, whether they're nervous, whether they're funny, whether they're, you know, whatever their style is, they're going to say nice things about longevity. Where I'm gauging it, though, is what do the people in longevity think of what's being said about longevity? So if you are leaning forward in your chair, if you are smiling, if you are laughing, if you are engaged, if you are saying, uh-huh, oh, yeah, that's true, uh-huh, if you are with me in the conversation, the guests will wander to what you're doing. Absolutely will. You know, there's been time and lots of studies done where, uh, let's say, you want to go to a Mexican restaurant, and the five people in front of you in the group that you're with go, I want to go Italian. I want to go Italian. Oh, my God, Italian sounds so good. By the time to get you on the sixth person, you're going, well, I think Italian. Why? Because we're influenced so much by the other people around us. So we are those other people around us. So whether you're in a small meeting room with three distributors and three guests, the two guests sitting in the chair have as much to do with the outcome as the person presenting. Because they're asking, well, what do the people already in it think? Like, oh, my God, they're excited. They're enthusiastic. They had stories to tell. They were giving testimonials. They seem to be – they all like each other so much. They were all engaged with each other. They were high-fiving each other. I like this energy, and I think that everybody's on the same page. So I want you to understand that we're setting the scene for somebody to see what we see at longevity in the best possible light. That's the same as there's three people in a room, 30 people in a room, 300 people in a room, or 1,000 people in a room. It's the exact same. The people in the second row last night were reading the people in the first row. The people in the third row were reading the people in the first and the second row's opinion. They were creating their opinions on what was being said by the people in front of them as much as by the words being said by the front. In fact, the more people were uh ahhing me and laughing with me last night, the more the guests were paying attention to me because they're going, I better pay attention to this guy because these people really think it's pretty good. So I want you to understand that you have a role to play. And the second thing is, let's pretend that you're in an area that's not doing meetings right now. And you decide, we should do a meeting. We should do a meeting every other week at Susie's house. Although there's only eight reps in the community, let's do a meeting every other week at Susie's house, and we'll all bring guests. And the first meeting goes pretty well. But the second meeting, you don't have a guest. So you say, I don't have a guest. I'm not going to show up. I'll go do other things around the house. If you are a committed team of people, and, you know, like I say, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Then you've got to come to that meeting because the number of people in the room who are committed to it influences the other people. So if you're only going to come when you have a guest, 
when you actually have a guest, what do you feel like when the other people in your team don't show up because they didn't have a guest? They let you down. It's like, my God, so when four of us here, this would be so much more impactful if there was 12 of us here. And you're right. It would be much more impactful if there's 12 of you there. So if you're in our community and you're going to do a meeting and you're just starting out, you guys all have to commit to be there for one another even when you don't have a guest. And you have to be just as engaged and just as interested and just as committed to that as even if you had a guest there. Because what you're hoping is that by your participation, it will, it will create lifeblood, that that room will start growing. And as it starts growing, it becomes a more inviting place to join. Now, it's okay at the very beginning. You're going, well, Dr. Gold, I mean, you guys have meetings, there's 40, 50, 100, 200 people. It's, that's so easy. It's easy to sell a meeting when, they're at the, when there's 10 of you there, five of you there, three of you there, because you can tell people, listen, this is our very first meeting in our community. And there's all kinds of meetings going all around the United States that now certain areas when they do a Super Saturday or an event training, there's a 1,000 people just in the city going to it. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And you're the people we're going to build it up around with. So when those people come to that 1,000-person meeting that we're going to hold in this community a year from now, they're going to be yours. So at the beginning, it's okay to be small. And you can sell that. And when you get to the intermediate size, like last night, I said we're proud to be 48. We are proud to be 48. I won't be proud to be 48 a year from now or six months from now or even four months from now. But at every stage, we're proud of where we're at. We recognize the effort of the people who brought the people. And we keep moving forward. So at a meeting, you're going to say to yourself, okay, well, what are the parts of a meeting? Well, last night's meeting, we had three presenters. And we used the longevity presentation material. We actually had four. We had somebody welcome everybody. And that was the meeting host. That was the person whose room we were using. And that person's job was just to welcome everybody, tell their story of why they joined Longevity in one or two minutes, and introduce the first speaker. The first speaker's job was simply to go through the beginning of the slide deck which is, and to warm the crowd up and talk a little bit about why they joined Longevity, how they love this company, and a little bit about who the company is because that follows the slideshow. The third speaker was introduced and edified, and there was hugging between the two speakers, and they talked about the product line and Dr. Wallace's mission and also about the other products within our company. That person then edified the last speaker who came and talked about the financial opportunity within our company, and that speaker you know, closed the event for us that night. When I first started having home meetings, I was all three speakers. I was everybody because I didn't have anybody else around. But if you're in a meeting room and there's only two people, one of them can at least be the opener saying, hi, I want to welcome you. This guy, my name is Corey Gold, and we're in Mary Smith's house, and I just love this company. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Let me tell you a little why I joined Longevity. Let me tell you why I'm here. Make yourself a real person, a relatable person. And let me tell you about the person who's going to come and present to you tonight. We're really lucky. There's only five of us here, but we're going to hear from a really wonderful speaker, a person who I really like, a person who, who has got tremendous talent, has been working this business, whatever it might be. I edify the speaker, and I invite the speaker up. Because even when there's just one speaker, having that person edified and having that person, the people in the audience are thinking, why should I listen to this person? But when the person says, well, let me welcome Corey Gold, or let me tell you, we're about to hear from a person who's been in the industry for over 20 years. He's made over a million dollars a year in this industry, the full time of this business. He's been the distributor of the year for our company, President's Award winner. He is an ambassador rank, which is the highest in the entire company. He's been voted on the top 25 network markers in the world the last four years in a row. And we're lucky to have him here in our living room tonight to start our area off. They're going to go, wow, I want to listen. We can build anybody up so that people will want to listen. I could do the same, and I did the same last night for an SCMD. I was saying, this is our area leader. His name is Glenn Andrade. Glenn is a really wonderful entrepreneurial young man. The guy has been working exceptionally hard at Young Jeffy and is really learning the business quickly. He rose to the rank of senior executive in only two months. He's car qualified 
already by his third month. He's been to our conventions. He's going to our conference. And he's a guy who's got big, big dreams and aspirations for what does he do with his business. And I want to introduce you to Glenn. What did I say about Glenn? Other than he became a senior executive marketing director. Because the people listening don't even know what that means. He's young and ambitious. He is young and ambitious. My point is we're trying to build it up so the person listening will say, I want to hear what this person has to say. Don't worry so much about what you say. Just follow the slides and give it, um, give it your best. I will tell you, if you are super nervous about holding your first home meeting, do the following. Just say, listen, before we get started with the meeting, which won't even take an hour, I want to play this 17-minute video of Dr. Joe Wallach and our company's story. And play it. And then just say, you know, I know that was just an overview. And let me show you some slides now and tell you a little bit about the parts that we didn't fill in about the compensation portion of our company. That's fine. If I got a room full of people to watch the 17-minute Dr. Wallach video and then watch like the seven or eight-minute Longevity video and then maybe told them a little about the compensation plan, that would be way ahead of telling them nothing, right? So if you're super nervous, use the videos. Would I prefer that you stand and do it yourself? Yeah, I would, because that relates you to them as an expert. But I don't care. I would rather have you say, listen, I'm just doing my very first meetings here. I love Young Jelly, but I'm not really great at telling the story yet. Let me play you a 17-minute video about our company's product line, our mission, and our heart, and what we do. And then after that, say, you know, if you don't mind, I'll play you a seven-minute video about our compensation and how we get paid. And then afterwards, I'll answer all your questions and tell a little bit about my story. That whole thing wouldn't take even 35 minutes. 17 plus 7 is 24, maybe 15 minutes afterwards of your stuff, and you're still done by 45 minutes out the door. And the person at least goes, I could do that. I could play a video. I could keep my personal story. This is how easy it is. You play a video and tell your personal story. I could do that. So don't worry if you're not ready to do the stand-up bit. I'd rather even have you invite people into your house just to watch the video. How many of you really think about this? If you could get 15 people in your living room to watch that 17-minute video and then watch the seven-minute longevity video with you present and then be there and tell them how excited you were and tell them you want them to be involved with you and tell them a little bit about how the compensation plan works and what you've seen happen for other people, That'd be powerful. Now, and if you have other people in the room who have already joined Longevity, and they're going, oh, yeah, that product is great. Oh, my God, I love Dr. Wallach. Oh, my God, did you hear he just got an award at the United Nations? That's what you want. So let's back it up a couple seconds. If I do a presentation and I stand up and I talk about the business or the products, it's nice. But remember, the very first thing the person's asking is, is this real? So I can go, oh, the guy in the shiny suit says it's real. He says the products are really good. That doesn't work. It works to some level, but it really doesn't answer the question about the products of the business. But if I then have, and let me have my neighbor, Mary, stand up and tell you about her experience. And Mary stands up and she you know, says, you know, I used to have really bad diabetes. And I took the pack for the diabetes. I don't even know its name, but I take it every single day. Dr. Gold helped me order it. And you know something? I'm doing a lot better. I'm able to cut down my medication. I feel much more energy. I feel great. Well, thank you, Mary. That's terrific. I appreciate that story. How about you, Jim? I know you have a story about your back. Oh, yeah, yeah. My back was really, really bad. In fact, I couldn't play sports at all. I couldn't lift the kids at all couldn't with the groceries, it was all bad, and I started taking these products, and my back feels great. You know, those are the stories that make this. Don't just say, well, I want to line up a cancer cure and a cancer cure, and this person had malignant tumor cure. It, it, it's so unrelatable. But when you tell somebody, says, well, I had diabetes, or hey, you know something? I, I was trying to lose weight. I couldn't lose weight after having my baby, and we did this, and I lost 22 pounds in two months. And people go, wow. Or you know something, I, was, I couldn't sleep at night. I was unable to sleep. I started taking two of the products in the line, and I've been sleeping so much better. People go, oh, my God, my, my mom has a problem with that. Oh, my God, my, my brother has diabetes. Oh, God, my, my sister has a bad back. We're answering the question, is it real? 
because the non the non presenter is presenting. Same thing happens on the compensation side. You can show all the metrics, and it looks like a weather map. You can show all the metrics, it looks like the stock exchange. And that's good, and I believe in showing the picture. But when you say to people, you know, and in my organization of people right now, there's at least, you know, 50, well, it's a small group, at least five of us have our car bonuses where we're getting paid at least $300 for our car. In fact, Mary, what are you getting? I'm getting a $600 car bonus. Mary's getting 600 bucks a month as a car bonus. Did you earn the cruise too? Yeah, I earned the cruise this year. Fantastic. It's like Mary over there is just like one of my freaking neighbors, and she's getting $600 a month in car bonus, and she won a cruise. The comp plan works. Not because I showed you the metrics, which I did show you, but because Mary got a car bonus, and she got a cruise. Me saying that Malina Briggs earned a five-figure check, me saying that Lorette Willis earned a bigger-than-that five-figure check makes it real. Be saying that I'm earning a full time income if I was not, I mean, that kind of Corey Gold is a regular guy. I'm earning a full time income in network marketing makes it real. So, what we want to do is go beyond just reading facts. We want to interject personality and people into it. Make sure at your meetings, even if it's in your living room, that you tell the people who are presenting, keep it to a minute. Or two, max. Because sometimes people want to tell you every single ailment they ever had and every single thing that's ever happened to them and everything that every doctor ever said. And quite frankly, we actually practice giving testimonials at our Super Saturday. We actually will go, if we were doing this live right now and I was sitting in Mike Battistelli's rec room and there was 20 of us there, I'd be saying, all right, why don't you stand up and tell me your product story? And let's package it to a minute to two minutes. Period. And just the most important pieces. Tell me your business story in a minute to two minutes. Why did you join? What's happened to you in this period of time? Where do you want to go? In other words, when I could say, I could call on anybody. I say, hey, Mary, I see you in the back of the room there. Tell me a little about why you joined. Tell me a little about your business story. Oh, well, th- thanks for calling me. Give me notice. Um, hi, hi, I'm Mike, and I, you know, I joined just like four months ago. Corey's one of my friends, and you know, I'm I'm a school teacher, and you know, we don't make a lot of income, and you know, we wanted some more, you know, we had some problems around the house. I was looking for to make some extra income. I heard about this with Corey, and we're just having the greatest time ever. And this group is a lot of fun, and I'm building my team, and I've already earned three or four hundred dollars a month in commissions after my third or fourth month, and it's only getting better. And going, I like that guy. He's a school teacher earning 400 bucks a month in his second or third month. That's cool. It's not a million dollars, but the average person listening goes, I believe it. Everybody has a story to tell. And it doesn't have to be the I'm a million dollar earner. It's okay to say, hey, one of the people that's training me makes well over a million dollars a year in this industry. And I have people in my upline who are earning six figure income. And that's what I want to do too. I'm not doing it yet, but that's where I want to go, and that's what I'm learning how to do. That's okay. So, by the way, people ask me, well, should I allow questions and answers during my business presentation? If, you're, if you have more than four people in the room as guests, no. And I say four because there's only three of you in the living room. Yeah, you might be able to answer a question or two. But the second one person starts asking a bunch of questions, you, you lose the flow of the meeting. So I tell people, I said, we're going to finish this up in less than an hour. And I know that this video is a thumbnail sketch of our products and our business. And I know that a lot of you are going to have questions. And we want to answer your questions. But we want to finish in an hour. So let's make sure we do this, do this from soup to nuts, from start to finish, finish in less than an hour. Then afterwards, if you have questions, we'll be happy to stick around and answer them for you as long as you like. Because I want them to hold their questions. If there's only one or two guests and there's only a small amount of us, yeah, sure, it becomes a little bit more interactive. We don't want them to feel like it's you know, too much of a, you know, a classroom with only four or five people in the room. But like last night at 48 people, if one or two were to ask questions, we would have got off on all kinds of tangents that 
wouldn't have helped us go from point A to point B. So we tell them right after that. Or if somebody raised their hand in the middle of the room and say, you know, I know you got questions. I'm so excited you have questions. But why, we want to finish in an hour. So why don't you and I talk afterwards and I'll go over your questions for you. Now, why do I do that? For a lot of reasons. One reason is I want to make sure we finish in an hour. The second reason is, is remember, the person in the room is asking, could I do this? And they don't want to say, oh, my God, I'm going to do a presentation. And there could be 4,000 people asking 4,000 wacky, crazy questions that I could never answer. And I'm going to look like a dunderhead, right? I don't mind looking like a dunderhead one-on-one, but I don't want to look like a dunderhead in front of 40 or 50 people. So if it's one-on-one, somebody says, well, can you tell me what kind of towels you're using inside this product? I could say, I don't know, but I'll look it up for you and I'll get back to you. I'd rather have that conversation one-on-one. So I try to have questions go up at the end. The reason we hold meetings is not to just have fun. The reason we have meetings is to get people to join. It is an enrollment program. That's what it's about. And we tell them right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. It's like, we're not going to try to force you to do anything you don't want to do. That wouldn't be right, and we wouldn't enjoy it, and you wouldn't enjoy it. But we're hoping that a lot of you here tonight will really enjoy this material and see how this could be a benefit for you from you and want to get involved. And at the end, we're probably going to come up to you and ask you, what do you think about all this, and would you like to be involved? And if you do, we're going to want to do it with you and have some fun with you, and let's go win. So they know from the very beginning, we're going to probably ask them afterwards, what do they think? Do they want to be involved? People are going to bring people to a meeting because they want somebody else to share the stories. So you invited somebody. Mike Battistelli's in front of the room. Uh, Lorette Wilson's in front of the room. Deb's in front of the room. You, you can name it. Jenny's in front of the room. And they're presenting, and they're doing a great job. At the end, you can turn to that person, and here's what I want you to say to them, is, you know something? I think you would be incredible at this business. It would be so much fun to work with you. We could just do great. What do you say? They can always say no. But if I'm being asked to join something, and somebody says to me, I think you would be great at it, I would love to work with you. We would do fantastic together. What do you say? I'm much more likely to say yes. And if somebody says, well, I'll call you tomorrow and see what you think about it. You, you go home and think about it for a while. We're, we're actually one in Rome there. I don't care if it's a three on three people in my living room. I don't care if it's 300 people in a meeting room. We want to enroll people right there and then. If they don't want to enroll, okay. But I will tell you that we have clipboards and we have paper applications. And we walk around the room and we, we tell the people, go ahead and sign your people up. You can input the information later. If there's only three of you in a home, you can just go right to the computer and do it right on the computer. But we say, listen, let's get you started. In our meetings, we tell them that we are building a business and the cost of joining the business and getting started the best way to become, uh, join our business is to become a CEO. And that's a one-time, only $499 business decision. And they get at least $500 worth of products that they can use and sample for other people to help them start their business. And after that, they'll be probably buying about $150 worth of items that they want. And a lot of the items that they want will be things they're currently buying somewhere else. So if they're shampooing their hair and conditioning their hair, they can do that with us for a better product about the same price. If they're taking care of their pets, they can do that with our company through our product line. If they are using makeup, if they're drinking a cup of coffee, if they're taking vitamins, or if they're not, they should be taking the 90 for life. If they're drinking hot chocolate, you know, whatever they're doing in their life right now that they're probably going to Kroger's or GNC or someplace to get those items, to qualify as a business person, they'll simply change their shopping to longevity. So when you're buying that vitamin you're buying now, you're going to buy that 90 for life nutrition with us. When you're getting that makeup for your wife, she's going to get that mineral makeup through us. When you're buying your shampoos and conditioners, you'll buy it through us. When you're buying the, the stuff for your garden, you'll buy it with us because we're your trusted source 
and you're going to know a lot about why you want these products for your family, why they are the kind of things you would want inside your children, on the skins of people you care about, you know, in your environment, why you'd want them. So think of our business as not new money, but just you reallocating the money you're already spending. You're going to be spending it with us, some of that money, that you're currently spending somewhere else. And that's, we're going to ask other people that you know to do the same thing. You're going to ask them to get healthy and take the challenge and to have the 90 essential nutrients. If they have health concerns, we will help them through our 90 essential nutrient product line. And we're going to want them to do their shopping with longevity, like you're shopping with longevity. And most of the people who are qualifying to earn you commissions, they're going to be taking money out of the hands of Walmart and out of the hands of GNC and out of the hands of Kmart and out of the hands of Costco. And instead, we're going to put it into our own store. So you're going to go shopping at your store at Longevity, and the people you're going to be bringing in, whether they're distributors or customers, will be buying from their own store at Longevity. And instead of that money flowing to some really wealthy owner of a major box store, it's going to be flowing through you and all the people in your organization and your community. You're recirculating the dollars that are currently going in your community to buy those items into the people in your community versus the corporation in your community or somewhere else in the world. People resonate with that. So we're buying these items, and instead of buying it from a company that's probably headquartered in China or Germany or Lithuania or some crazy place, the monies that get sold, that come from being sold, these products will actually go to people probably living in this community who are sharing the product message. And you're going to do the same thing. And people all around this country could be buying these products, and the money's going to you versus GNC or Kroger or Costco. So we try to paint the picture that this is not something super complicated. And when people ask us, well, I understand there's a lot of conference calls and a lot of webcasts, those are all optional. Some people love product information. And we have tons of product conference calls and webcasts and, you know, events where you can learn all about the products. We want you to learn about the products. You can go often as you want. We do trainings here on a weekly basis or a biweekly basis. The company has trainings all the time. So it's not to be for lack of training. And I constantly tell people in our meeting, in our meeting room that this is a team environment and we are going to help them build their business and our success is through their success. So if they're not successful, we're not successful. So we have every reason to help them become successful. And if you're at work and you want somebody in this team to talk to one of your prospects, we will do that for you because this is how that business works. So you could be working at school and text your your sponsor, hey, can you talk to Mary because Mary's thinking of joining today? And your sponsor's going to say, yeah, I'll talk to Mary for you. And you're teaching your secondary class and somebody's helping you build your dream business while you're at work. So a lot of that's what we're talking about. So the first step in any business is the invitation step. Second step is the presentation step. Yes, you can put people in front of online videos. Yes, you can put people on that give them a doctor, their doctors don't lie CD. Yes, you can get people on a three-way call. Yes, you can get people, you know, on a three, you know, one-on-one or two-on-one lunch event. Those are all good. But I love meetings. There's nothing like them. And from the local meetings, you built the bigger meetings. And from the bigger meetings, you have local trainings. And from the local meetings, you have area regional events. And eventually, we feed into events like Charlotte, where we have lots and lots and lots of people. Remember, the very first question we're asking is, is this real? And then when it's you and them sitting at a Starbucks, it's not unreal. It's more real when there's 10 distributors and 10 guests sitting in your living room. It's more real when there's 50 people sitting in a meeting. It becomes absolutely crystal clear when you're in Charlotte and there's 1,500 people in a room. It becomes like, overwhelmingly clear when you're sitting in Utah a year from now with four or 5,000 people in a room. It's called making something real. And even though somebody joins and even though somebody becomes a CEO, it doesn't mean they are 100% bought in yet. So by going to bigger meetings and meeting more people and hearing more product stories and hearing more business success stories, it becomes more real, more tangible, more feasible, 
Because somebody might hear me and go, well, I didn't hear anything in that meeting that really resonated with me because the product. But they go to another meeting, they go, oh, my God, that person has what my mom has. That wasn't, that was, nobody had a testimonial at my meeting. They had it at the fourth meeting. So coming to these meetings, they hear more testimonials. They, hear, they see more people. They hear more success stories. They bond with people. And people don't tend to quit friends. People quit uplines. People quit downlines. People don't tend to quit friends. Now, I can have a comp call, and I could call Nora up right now, and I could see her immediately in my, face, in my head. Why? Because I, mean, I know her. I could immediately call Deb. I, could, I see Deb's smiling face, and I see Mark in the background. I can see them because I know them. Having those relationships where people actually know each other makes the phone calls different. So that's why I love that like, event in Charlotte because I'm going to see everybody again. So when somebody calls up and say, remember Mary from Wisconsin? Yeah, I know Mary from Wisconsin. Sure, yeah, I know. Sure, absolutely. Because I know her now, and she knows me. So having those meetings is so much better than simply doing phone. If we were sitting together in a room right now, and I was doing this in front of you and drawing this on a board, it would be 100 times better. And if I was to have one or two of you stand up and do testimonials, it would be so much better because, you go, oh, yeah, I see what they did there. I see how we corrected her. Oh, I see how that works. So this is good. Charlotte would be that much better. So now, like, you're having weekly meetings in your community or biweekly meetings in your community. Maybe it's time to have a Super Saturday. You're going, well, I'm not so super. We'll tell you what to do for a Super Saturday. It doesn't have to be brain surgery. The more training a person has, the more they feel capable of moving forward. And a lot of people don't recruit simply because they don't feel like they know what they're doing. So we want them to become strong at inviting. And we can do all kinds of examples when we do our Saturday meetings where you can actually practice inviting people to stuff. And by the way, women are a thousand times better inviters than men. You know, women invite me to anything. I'm going. I'm a dude. I've been, I've been genetically wired to follow women. So if, if, a, if a woman says to me, hey, we're going here, I'm like, I'm going here. I don't know why I'm going, I'm going. You ever see like any, any Jewish household? It's like a, a little tiny 90-year-old woman who runs everything. Why? They run everything. We just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandma says so. So all you do is ask people to do things. I don't mean ask them in a mean way, jump off a cliff or anything. I mean you just have to ask people to do things. I want you to come to this meeting. I want you to be at this event. It's important that you're there. Okay, and tell people what you expect them at those events. So let's back off just for a second. You're now listening in and you're going, well, that's all great, but I, I'm in Wisconsin by myself. And how am I going to do a meeting? Well, Melina Briggs' first meeting was me calling on a, on a cell, on a speakerphone, doing the presentation. It works. You could have Mike Battistelli, you could have your upline call in and even at the very beginning just say, hey, I'm so glad you're here. This is like the first team that's going to be taking, you know, Idaho. This is going to become Longevity Idaho. We're so excited. We all love Mary so much. We're all so excited for what she's going to do. She's such a good networker. She's such a, she knows so much about Longevity. We just love her to death. Let me tell you a little bit about what's happening in the rest of the country, what we want to see happen in Idaho. And then Mary's going to play like a 17-minute video for you. And then we're going to ask you to become involved and, like, rule the world of young Jebby in Idaho. And people laugh. Guess what? It works. We now have Team Aloha going all over Hawaii. That's what we did. We said, now Molina's going to show you a 15-minute video. And then after it was over, I came back on and said, listen, here's what we want to do. We want to make Hawaii a huge part of young Jebby. We want to do it through you and the people in this first room with Molina. And here's, what, here's your opportunity. It's so exciting. And people joined. You can do a phone meeting. If you're not happy to do your first meeting on your own, call my, call your upline, call your senior vice chairman above you and say, can you do a phone meeting with me and walk me through it all? They'll do it with you. As goofy as it sounds, it works. 
Mike, I'm going to take a break here. What do you want to add? Because there's so much I've left out. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know if you've left anything out, but I, I have to tell you there are so many reasons why I love this topic and even more reasons why this has been so far my personal favorite session. And, you know, Corey, one of the things that you drive home so so well and make it very, very real that this is that this business success, yeah, it's a high tech world. There are a lot of people that like to do push button things and it's great that we have some high tech tools and social media and the internet to support what we're doing, but there's nothing like building relationships. There there are well known stories of I I remember the stories of network marketing companies that were just being birthed during the, the very beginning of the internet age and and uh, big big businesses were built almost overnight. Nobody knew anybody. They were all sort of you know connected by the interwebs. And and the first piece of bad news that came flying down the highway about this company, about their product, or whatever it happened to be, the whole thing came crumbling down because there was no concrete, there was no relational foundation. And one of the things that um, that I I really hope tonight, and for those that that might listen to the replay. Um, get from this is the confidence that um, that I hope that your fears are allayed, that you are feeling more confident, that you don't have to take on the world and you know tear down the walls and be a Goliath first time out or second or third or eighth time out, that you are part of a team. And uh, I love the fact that you've got a gentleman here who's recognized industry-wide, makes seven figures a year, and a couple of months ago, he ventured an hour or more south from his home, planted a brand new meeting in what I would call a cold market. Corey, you didn't, you didn't really know a whole bunch of folks down there, did you? So you had five people at your first meeting. A couple of months later, it's grown. It's taken root. So there's no, there's no, <laughs> no mystery as to why Corey continues to grow and set the pace and set the record um, that that he does in this business, and we're just so blessed to have your your wisdom and your teaching. And it's just such make sense, practical stuff. I can't think of a thing that you left out, but um, if you, golly, I want to go and schedule my next meeting as soon as I get off this phone call because you have really fired me up. And uh, Corey, I can't thank you enough. Um, next week, and, and if there's anything you'd like to say in closing, please do. I know next week you've got another great topic for us. And um, so, folks, don't miss these. This, this is going to be important foundational skill building, confidence building, business building, um, solid, solid stuff to wrap your arms around. And is it, is it high tech? Is it, is it as mysterious as you thought it once was? Well, I hope not. Because it really is not. It's you're part of a team, and um, your team is no further away from you. Even if you're all alone in nowhere, Wyoming, uh, than than the telephone or Skype or, or what have you. Corey, fantastic job. Anything uh, you'd like to share in closing? Did we lose Corey? Well. I think I thanked him so much he uh, he decided to go on to the next meeting. Folks, thank you for joining us tonight. Next week, we're going to talk about the hows and whys of, uh, of three-way calls and, uh, and, and other tools like that that will help you connect, especially for those of you that are just getting started. So have a great night. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time. Same login protocol, same telephone number. In the meantime, have a great week. God bless. Let us know if we can help you in any way. Take care, everybody. Good night.